Hello everyone, welcome to Career Launcher. My name is Aparna Aman and today I am here with your COET actual paper analysis of subject geography. Okay, so in this video we will quickly discuss about the questions, what type they are and about their answers as well. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Question is, which of the following is a landlocked harbor? Options are first Paradweep, second Tutikorin, third Haldia, or fourth Vishakapatna. So here the correct answer is four. That is Vishakapatnam. It is in Art Pradesh and it is actually a landlocked harbor. Now second question is, which of the following ports is confronted with the problem of silt accumulation? First is Mumbai, second is New Mangalore, third is Kolkata, and fourth is Paradweep. Now, the correct answer for our this question is Kolkata port. Actually, Kolkata port is on Hooghly River, and this river have a specific problem of having silt accumulation. And due to that, Kolkata port also faces several problems. Okay. Now, the next question is, where is the headquarter of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, that is OPEC? Options are first, Montevideo, second Vienna, third Minsk, or fourth Eden. Now the correct answer for our this question is second, that is Vienna. Okay. Now the fourth question is the general agreement on tariffs and trade, that is GATT, was transformed into the World Trade Organization or the WTR, TO in dash. Okay. Now the given options are first 1995, second 1991, third 2005, or fourth 1976. The correct answer here is 1995. Actually, GAD was not a kind of permanent organization. Okay, so after the two world wars, the members nation they wanted a permanent council, a permanent uh, organization to solve their problem related to trade and tariffs. That's why they transformed GAD into WTO on 1st of January 1995. Now the question number fifth is, Paikara hydroelectricity plant was built in dash. It is, it is a fill in the blank question. The options given are 1929, 1939, third is 1932 and fourth is 1942. Now the answer for this question is third, that is 1932. Okay, now let's move to the next question. So question number six is, the total utilizable water resources in India is about dash cubic kilometer. Again, this is a fill in the blank type of question. Given options are first 4,000, second 1969, third 1869, fourth The correct answer is 1122. We, we only have 1122 cubic kilometer of utilizable groundwater resources, okay? Now the next question, that is question number seven is, the first radio program was broadcast in India in dash. Again, this is a fill in the blank type of question. Given options are first 1910, second 1913, third 1923, fourth 1932. Now the correct answer here is 1923. Okay, so the first broadcast, radio broadcast was done by the Radio Club of Bombay in the year 1923. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Question number eight. Question is, Canberra was planned by Dash. Again, this is a fill in the blank type of question. First is Patrick Geddes. Second, Walter Burley Griffin. Third is Gene Gottaman, Gene Gottaman. And fourth is George Ziff. Now the correct answer for our this question is second. That is Walter Burley Griffin. Okay. Next question is question number nine. It is a match list one with list two type of question. Means it is a kind of match the following type of question. In list one, we have approaches to human geography. And in list two, we have broad features. Okay. Now in list one, we have aerial differentiation, spatial organization, behavioral school, and postmodernism. And in list two, we have different features. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First is A1, B2, C3, D4. Second is A1, B3, C2, D4. Third is A1, B2, C4, D3. And fourth is A3, B4, C1, D2. 
Now the correct answer for our this question is first. Why? We will discuss now. So in the aerial differentiation, the focus was for the identification of uniqueness of any region and understanding how and why it is different. Now, during a spatial organization, the thinking behind that was the application of quantitative techniques in geography, like mapping, uh, mapping any of the phenomena was there. Okay, use of computers was there, use of physics law, physics, physical law was there. So all the quantitative techniques were in used. Now, in the behavioral school of thought, the main focus was not on the use of the quantitative revolution, but actually it is a period of discontent, uh, discontent with the quantitative revolution and different types of schools were like the humanistic school was there, etc. were launched. Okay, and in this period, dehumanization manner of doing geography was dis discarded. Okay, and at last, during the postmodernism phase, the focus was on the local context more than seeing the universe as a whole. Okay, so the correct answer is first A1, B2, C3 and D4. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Question number 10. Identify the following correct statement with reference to the characteristic of intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet paddy cultivation. Okay, given a statement are first, land holdings are very small due to high density of population. So for we know that for intensive subsistence, especially dominated by paddy crops, we know that these crops are grown in a river valley, okay, where the deposition of the sediments are there and due to that every year the new uh, alluvial plain by, uh, by, uh, were brought by the rivers during the flooding period. Okay. So these area were having a high density of population. So our this statement is correct. Now farmers work with the help of their family labor leading to intensive use of land. This is was this is also correct. Why? Because we know families are large and most of the family members were engaged in the available land. That's why farmer mostly work with their family and they also used to grow only for their family. Only the surplus were uh, brought to the market for the sale. Okay. Next is farm yard manure is used to maintain the fertility of soil. It is also correct because here the primitive method of uh, agriculture was used where the manual labor is in use, farm yard were in use, uh, basic tools like hose and sticks were in use, not the mechanized one. So this statement is also correct. Now the yield per unit area is low, but the productivity per labor is high. This is wrong. Why? Because for a small land holding, uh, having a five uh, membered family or seven membered family, all of them were engaged on the same land. That's why yield per unit area is high, but productivity per labor is low. Okay, so this statement is wrong. So our correct answer is third A, B, C only. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Question number 11. Arrange the following agricultural reasons from equator to pole. Given agricultural reason are A, commercial grain farming in the prairies, B, reindeer rearing by the Eskimos, C, tree plantation of Northeast India, and D, primitive subsistence farming in Indonesia. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? C, D, A, B, second D, C, A, B, third D, C, B, A, fourth C, D, B, A. Now, this is a sequence type of question. So, we will arrange uh, the given regions from equator to pole in a correct sequence. Now, the correct sequence for this question is first. Why? Because we have to arrange from equator to pole. Okay. So, tea plantation of North is India is somehow near the equator. Okay. So, this will become the first. 
After that, primitive subsistence farming in Indonesia will come the second. Then commercial grain farming in the prairies will be at the third. And last, reindeer rearing in the Eskimos will be the last because it is near the pole. Okay. So the correct sequence is CDAV. Now, next question number 12. Arrange the following as per the stage of demographic transition model. Again, this is a sequence-based question or chronology-based question. Here we have to arrange the given statement according to the stages of demographic, uh, demographic transition theory. Okay. Given statement are population growth is slow due to high birth and high death rate. Fertility remains high, but mortality declines at a faster pace. C is fertility decline at a faster pace, but mortality declines gradually. And last, last is population growth is slow due to the low birth and death rate. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, A, B, C, D. Second, A, C, B, D. Third, D, B, C, A. Fourth, D, C, B, A. Now the correct answer for this question is first. That is A, B, C, D. How we will know? So actually demographic transition model theory tried to describe the transformation of a society from illiterate, poor, and primitive to a highly modernized society where most of the population are literate, okay? So in the first phase, the population growth is slow due to high birth and high death rate. And uh, about 200 years ago, all the well, countries in the world were in this phase. Now, in the second phase, fertility remains high due to the high birth rate but mortality declines at a faster pace. Why? Health uh, facilities were now available to the people. Food is available to the people, okay? After that, fertility declines at a faster pace. Why? Because now the uh, health improved. So larger family is now not an asset. So fertility declines at a faster pace, but mortality declines gradually because the health uh, facilities were so good. Now at the last stage, Population growth is slow due to low birth and low death rate. So post-1981 in India, this uh, phase were happened where population growth is slow due to low and low, uh, uh, low birth and low death rate. Now, most of the civilized nation or the industrial nation like Japan and China, these nations were at this stage where they have even zero, near zero or negative population growth rate. Okay, so the correct sequence is A, B, C, D. Now we are moving to the next question. That is question number 13. Match list one with list two. Now again, this is a match the following type of question. In list one, we have a station and in list two, we have transcontinental railway. In list one, we have Cheetah, Winnipeg, Broken Hills and Chicago. And in list two, we have Australian transcontinental railway, Union Pacific Railway, Trans-Siberian Railway and Trans-Canadian Railway. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, A1, B2, C3, D4. Second, A3, B4, C1, D2. Third is A2, B1, C4, D3. And last is A3, B2, C4, D1. Now the correct match for our this question is second. That is A3. Cheetah is a station in Trans-Siberian Railway. Then B4. Winnipeg is a station in Trans-Canadian Railway. Then Broken Hill is a station in Australian Trans-Continental Railway. And at last, Chicago is a station in Union Pacific Railway. Okay. Now we are moving to the next one. Question number 14. Now arrange the following copper mines in south, not to south direction. Now again, this is a sequence-based question. Here we have to arrange the given copper mines from north to south. Given mines are Alwar, Vilwara, Khetri, and Udaipur. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? BDCA, second is CBAD, third is BCDA, fourth is CABD. Now the correct sequence or the correct combination for this question is fourth. That is Khetri is in the north. All the four mines are in Rajasthan. In that too, Khetri is in the north. Then after that, Alwar is there. After that, Bhilwara is there. And last one is at is the Udaipur, which is the southernmost one. Okay. So the correct sequence is CABD. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन Arrange the agricultural development of India in chronological order from independence to the present day. Again, this is a sequence-based question. Here now we have to arrange the agricultural development in India from the independence to the present day. Given developments are green revolution, agroclimatic planning, intensive agriculture district program, and national mission for sustainable agriculture. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. Given options are first C A B D, second B C A D D A. Third is BADC and fourth is DACB. Now the correct sequence for this question is first. Now the next question is question number fifteen. Question is arrange the agricultural development of India in chronological order from independence to the present day. Okay, so now this is also a chronology or sequence based question. Here we have to arrange agricultural development in India in chronological order since independence. Okay, given. Agricultural development as is green revolution, agroclimatic planning, intensive agriculture district program, and national mission for sustainable agriculture. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, C A B D. Second, B C D A. Third, B A D C. Fourth is D A C B. Now the correct sequence for this question is C A B D. How we will know? So the intensive agriculture district program. This was launched in 1950s. Okay. but it was not that much successful then after green revolution was started okay now after the green revolution we become self sufficient in food grains especially in wheat and rice but this development was only uh, limited to the punjab haryana and western uttar pradesh so for the rest of the crops we started agro climatic planning for rest of the region so that these regions also come up with the agricultural development and at last we launched the national plan mission for sustainable development so the correct sequence is cabd now the next question question number 16 match list 1 with list 2 now this is a match the following type of question in list 1 we had energy type and in list 2 we have key location and reasons in list 1 we have nuclear energy wind energy tidal energy and geothermal energy in list 2 we have gujarat and rajasthan west coast of india tarapur and manikaran now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below so what are the options first is a1 b3 c2 d4 second is a3 b1 c2 d4 third is a3 b4 c1 and d2 and fourth is a2 b4 c3 and d1 now the correct combination for this question is second why we know that tarapur it is a nuclear power station so a obviously a will match with th th third now for wind energy gujarat and rajasthan have already the potential potentials and we are also harnessing from these two states now for tidal energy which is the energy which harness from the coming and uh, growing of the tide so west coast is the best place and for geothermal energy we have already a well functioning plant established at manikaran himachal pradesh now geothermal is what energy is what it is actually energy which is trapped inside the earth which came out as in the forms of gaiers hot springs etc okay so the correct sequence is uh, correct combination is a3 b1 c2 and d4 now let's move to the next question that is your question number 17 question is which of the following statements are correct with respect to land degradation okay a all degraded lands are waste land second all degraded lands may not be waste land but unchecked process of development may lead conversion to waste land third is land degradation is permanent or temporary decline in productive capacity of the land and fourth is water logged marshy areas and gully lands are different type of so degraded land now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below what are the options first acd only second abd only third is ab and c only and fourth is bc and d only now the correct answer here is d bc and d only why let's find out so all degraded land are not waste land why because in the second statement is stated that all degraded land may not waste land but unchecked process of development may lead to the conversion of waste land which is correct okay now land degradation we all know it is a permanent or temporary decline in the productive capacity of the land so it is also correct and at last water logged marshy area and gullied lands are different types of degraded land 
So the correct answer is B, C and D only. Now let's move to the next one. Question number 18. Identify the following statement which is not correct about the Rhine waterway. So we have to find the incorrect statement. First is it is navigable for 700 km. It is correct. It flows through a rich coal field and the whole basin has become a prosperous manufacturing process. It is also correct. Now the next is ocean going vessels can reach up to Colinge. It is also correct. And at last it connects the industrial areas of Switzerland, France and Russia. It is wrong because it connects Germany, Switzerland, France, etc. but not the Russia. So our correct answer is fourth. Now we are moving to the next one. That is question number 19. Question is, arrange the following states in descending order on, the, on their population density as per the census of India 2011. Now, again, this is a sequence-based question. Here we have to arrange the states, given states in descending order according to their population density as per census 2011. Given states are West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, BDCB, DACB. Second is ACBD, third is BADC, fourth is CBDA. Now the correct sequence for this question is second, ACBD. How? Because West Bengal has highest population of 1029, okay, 1029. After that, Kerala has the highest population that is of 859, okay. Now, after Kerala, Uttar Pradesh having a population of 828 will come at the third place. And at last, Tamil Nadu, it is only 555. Okay. So, the correct sequence is ACVD. Now, question number 20. Match list 1 with list 2. Again, this is a match the following type of question. In list 1, we have types of town and in list 2, we have example. In list one, we have industrial, commercial, transport, and garrison. And in list two, we have Mau, Katni, Satna, and Modi Dagar. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, A4, B3, C2, D1. Second, A1, B3, C2, D4. Third, A1, B2, C4, D3. And fourth is A3, B4, C1, and D2. Now the correct combination for this question is first. So, for industrial town, this town has arises due to the concentration of industries. Modi Nagar is a fine example. Now, commercial towns are both. These are towns for the commercialization or for the uh, trading and uh, trading centers. So, the, for the commercial town, the correct example is Satna. Tra what are tra transportation towns? These towns are developed due to the establishment of transportation links. So for this, Katni is the few, uh, is a fine example, and Garrison Town. These towns are having a containment uh, zone. Okay, so that is Mau. So the correct combination is first A four B three C two and D one. Okay. Now we are moving to the next one. That is your question number twenty one. Question is identify the following the correct statements with reference to metropolis. It is often the chief center or the seat for some form of activity. It could be administrative, commercial, or industrial center. C, it generally serves a small hinterland. Or D, it is a very large city or agglomeration of the population. Now, we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the given options? First, A, B, and D only. Second, A, C, and D only. Third, A, B, and C only. And fourth is B, C, B, C and D only. Now, the correct answer for our this question is first, A, B, and D only. Why? We will find out. So metropolis, it is actually a concentration of fewer larger city. Okay. So it is often the chief center or the seat of some form of activity. It is correct. It could be administrative, commercial and or industrial center. It is also correct. Now it is a very large city or the agglomeration of the population. This is also correct. But it generally serves a large hinterland, not the small one. That's why this statement is incorrect. So our correct answer is A, B, and D only. That is your option number one. Next question, question 22. Match list one with list two. Again, this is a match the following type of question. 
In list one, we have economic activity and list, list two, we have examples. In list one, we have quaternary, secondary, tertiary, and primary. And in list two, we have manufacturing, mining, taxi services, and research scientists. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the option given below. What are the options? First is A1, B2, C3, D4. Second is A1, B3, C2, D4. Third is A4, B1, C3, and D2. And fourth is A3, B4, C1, and D2. Now the correct combination for this question is third. So we know that research scientists, these actually come under the quaternary services. Why? Because this is a kind of high order thinking services. Then secondary, we know that manufacturing is all we talk about the secondary activities, okay? Now, for tertiary activities, we know that this is it is the area for services, like doctors, barbers, taxi services, banks, etc. Okay? And at last, mining, agriculture, fishing, these are the primary activities. So, the correct combination is A4, B1, C3, and D2. Okay? Now, we are moving to the next question. That is our question number 23. Identify from the following the correct statements with reference to the oil refineries in India. First is Digbo is an example of market-based oil refinery. Second, Tatipaka oil refinery is located in Andhra Pradesh. Third, Numaligarh oil refinery is located in Northeast India. And fourth, Bina oil refinery is located in Madhya Pradesh. Now the correct answer, uh, we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? First, A, B, and D only. Second, A, B, and C only. Third, A, C, and D only. And fourth is B, C, and D only. Now, the correct answer for our this question is fourth. That is B, C, and D only. Why? Because Digboy, it is actually an example of field-based oil refinery, not the market-based. That's why this statement is wrong. Rest three statement is correct. That is, Tatipaka oil refinery, it is in Andhra Pradesh. Numaligarh, it is in Northeast state. And Bina oil refinery, it is in Madhya Pradesh. So our correct answer is B, C, and D only. Let's move to the next question. Question number 24. Identify the following from the following, the correct statements about transportation in India. A, Atal Tunnel passes through Pir Panjal range. Second, about 80% of Indian railway track it is of meter gauge. Third, the Inland Waterway Authority was set up in 1986. And D, the Konkan Railway connects Roha in Karnataka to Mangalore in Kerala. Now we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. What are the options? A, B, and C only. Second, A and C only. Third, A and B only. And fourth, B, C and D only. Now the correct answer is here is only second, A and C only. Why? Let's find out. So Atal Tunnel, it passes through the Pir Panjal Rail. It is correct. Okay. About 80% Indian, Indian railway track is of meter gauge. It is wrong. Okay. Now, the Inland Waterways Authority of India was set up in 1986. It is correct. And at last, Konkan Railway connects Roha in Maharashtra, not in Karnataka, and Mangalore in Karnataka, not in Keral. So, this statement is also wrong. So, only our statement A and C are correct, which is our option number two. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Now we have to read the given passes carefully and answer the five questions that follow. Now this is a simple fact-based question. Here we have to simply read the paragraph to find the answers for the questions which are given below. And the best way to solve this kind of question is to simply find the answer from the paragraph. And for doing this, we must first read the questions. Okay, so let's do this, this question in the same way. Question is, question number 25. The small scale manufacturing and the cottage manufacturing are distinguished on the basis of dash. This is the fill in the blank question. The given options are first raw material, second quantity of production, third production techniques, and fourth sales of sale of profit. Now let's move to the paragraph to find the answer. Here a small scale industry is there, so it is here. A small scale manufacturing is distinguished from household industry by its production techniques and place of manufacture. So from this first line related to a small scale industry, we find our answer, which is our the, this is the production technique. That is option number three. Now, next question, question number 26. Which one of the following is not a feature of a small scale industry? Okay. First, it engages semi-skilled labor force. Second, it provides employment and raises local purchasing power. Third, the artisan produce good in their homes with the help of their family members or part-time labor. 
and fourth it is labor intensive manufacturing now we will read our paragraph to find the answer let's move to the paragraph so we are talking about the small scale industry so small scale manufacturing is distinguished from the household industry by the production technique and the place of manufacture that is a workshop outside the home or yeah, cottage of the producer okay this type of manufacturing uses local raw materials simple power driven machines and semi skilled labor it provides employment and raises local purchasing power therefore countries like india china indonesia and brazil etc have developed labor intensive small scale manufacturing in order to provide employment to their population now after reading this we we'll know that it engages semi skilled labor force it is correct it provides employment and raises local purchasing power it is also correct it is labor intensive manufacturing that is also correct because these kind of industries developed especially in india and china but the artisan produce goods in their home this is not correct why because we know that it is outside the home like a workshop okay so our correct answer is third because we have to find the incorrect feature next question from the following identify the feature of the cottage industry first use of advanced technology second specialized workers third finished product may be for the consumption in the same household and fourth is mass production now let's move to the cottage industry cottage industry is the smallest manufacturing the artisan use local material and simple tool to produce everyday goods in their homes with the help of their family members or part time labor finished products may be for the consumption in the same household or for the sale in the local markets okay so from this line we got our answer that is answer number third that is option number third okay now next question question 28 large scale manufacturing is not dash again this is the fill in the blanks question given ka option are capital in intensive energy intensive technology intensive and labor intensive now let's read the paragraph about large scale industries large scale manufacturing involves a large market various raw materials enormous energy specialized workers advanced technology assembly line mass production and large capital now from this line it is clear that large scale industries has capital intensive energy intensive technology intensive but these are not labor intensive that is our option number 4 because there is a large mass line of production with the help of robotics uh, technology etc now next question question number 29 which of the following is not a product of cottage industry mat shoe third is car and fourth is basket okay so let's read about the cottage industry so we know that cottage industry is the smallest manufacturing industry the artisan use the local raw material and simple tool to produce everyday goods in their home with the help of their family members or part time labor finished products may be for the consumption in the same household or for sale in the local market capital and transportation do not build much influence on this type of manufacturing has low commercial significance and most of the tools are devised locally some common everyday products uh, produced in this sector of manufacturing include food stuffs fabric mats container tools furniture shoes and figures of the wood from the forest shoes thongs and other articles from leather leather pottery and bricks from the clays and stones goldsmith make jewelry of the gold silver and bronze some artifacts and crafts are made out of bamboo wood obtained locally from the forest so from this it is clear that mat shoe and basket is the are the examples of cottage industry but not the car okay so our correct answer is third now let's move to the next one again read the given passage carefully and answer the five questions that follow we use the same technique because we have to simply read the paragraph to find the answer so we will first read the question followed by the paragraph to find the answer okay so let's directly move to the questions first question r question number 30 petlawat block of jhabua is located in which part of district a southernmost second westernmost third northernmost or fourth easternmost now let's move to the paragraph to find the answer 
So Jabor district is located in westernmost aeroclimatic zone in Madhya Pradesh. It is in fact one of the most five most backward district in the country. It is characterized by high concentration of tiber population, mostly males. The people suffer due to poverty, which has been assassinated by the high rate of resource degradation, both forest and land. The watershed management program funded by both the Ministry of Rural Development and Agriculture, Government of India, have been successfully implemented in Jabwa district, which have gone a long way in preventing land degradation and improving the soil quality. Watershed management program acknowledges linkage between land, water, and vegetation and attempt to improve the livelihood of the people through natural resource management and community participation. In the past five years, the program funded by the Ministry of Rural Development alone have treated 20% of the total area under the Jabua district. The Petlawad block of Jabua is located in the northernmost part of the district. So from this line, it is clear that our answer is third, that is northernmost. Next question, which tribal communities ha has high concentration in the district of Jabua? First Bill, second Munda, third Santal or fourth Mina? Now let's move to the paragraph to find the answer. Jabwa district is located in the westernmost agroclimatic zone in Madhya Pradesh. It is, in fact, one of the five most backward districts in the country. It is characterized, uh, characterized by a high concentration of tribal population, mostly bills. So from this line, it is clear that our correct answer is first, that is bills. Question number 32. The watershed management programs which have been successfully implemented in, the, in Jabwa were funded by DASH. First, Ministry of Tourism, second, Ministry of Rural Development and Agriculture, third, Ministry of Road Transportation and Highway, and fourth is Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Now, let's read the paragraph to find the answer. Jabwa district is located in the westernmost climatic zone in the Madhya Pradesh. It is, in fact, one of the five most backward districts in the country. It is characterized by the high concentration of tribal population, mostly bills. The people suffer due to the poverty, which has been associated by the high rate of resource degradation, both forest and land. The watershed management program funded by both the ministries of rural development and agriculture, government of India, have been successfully implemented in the Jawa district, which have gone a long way in preventing land degradation and improving soil quality. So from this line, it is clear that our correct answer is second, that is Ministry of Rural Development and Agriculture. Now let's move to the next question, that is question number 33. Which among the following was not used by bills to revitalize common property resources. First, plantation of fodder grass, second, plantation of trees, third, open grazing, or fourth, social fencing. Now, let's quickly move to the paragraph to find the answer. Jabwa district is located in the westernmost agroclimatic zone in Madhya Pradesh. It is, in fact, one of the five most backward districts in the country. It is characterized by a high concentration of tribal population, mostly bills. The people suffer due to poverty, which has been associated by high rate of resource degradation, both forest and land. The watershed management program funded by both the ministries of rural development and agriculture, government of India, have been successfully implemented in Jabwa district, which has gone a long way in preventing land degradation and improving soil quality. Watershed management programs acknowledge linkages between land, water, and vegetation, and attempt to improve livelihood of people through natural resource management and community participation. In the past five years, the program funded by the Ministries of Rural Development alone implement, have treated 20% of the total area under the Jabua district. The Petlawad block of Jabua is located in the northernmost part of the district and represent an interesting and successful case of government NGO partnership and community participation in managing wasteland program, watershed programs. Bills, the bills in the Petlawad block, for example, through their own efforts, have revitalized large parts of common property resources. Each household planted and maintained one tree on the common property. They have also planted fodder grass on the pasture land and adopted social fencing of these land for at least two years. Even after that, they said there would, would be no open grazing on these lands. Okay, so from these lines, it is clear that our correct answer is third, because open grazing was prohibited. Okay. Now, the next question is, Jabwa district is located in which agroclimatic zone of Madhya Pradesh? First, northernmost, second, southernmost, third, easternmost, fourth, fourth westernmost. So, Jabwa district is located in the westernmost agroclimatic zone in Madhya Pradesh. So, from the very first line of the given paragraph, we find our answer, that is the westernmost. Option number four. Okay. Now let's quickly move to the next question. 
Geography is the study of human beings and environment where nature is supreme that dictates the lifestyle of human being. Identify the geographical approach refer to this statement from the following. First, possibilism, second, environmental determinism, third, behaviorism, fourth, humanism. Now, the correct answer for this question is second, environmental determinism. Why? Because we know that according to this concept, humans were simply the followers of the nature. At that time, technology was low, people were mostly illiterate. So we simply use the nature as it allows us. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. That is question number 37. Which of the following geographer described the state, your country as a living organism? Okay. First French, second German, third Australian or fourth Indian. So the correct answer for this question is second, because it was the Germans who described a state or countries as a living organism. We are moving to the next one. That is question number 38. Which of the following countries population does not have a triangular shaped age six pyramid? First Australia, second Bangladesh, third Nigeria or fourth Mexico. Now the triangular shaped age based pyramid, it is developed when when there is a high growth rate of population. Okay. Now, the growing countries or the, those countries which are less developed, like Nigeria, Bangladesh, and Mexico, these have this triangular shape of pyramid. But for Australia, the pyramid is of bell shaped. Okay. Which is a constant population pyramid. Now, the next one. Which of the following approaches was initially proposed by International Labor Organization or ILO? Okay. So, first is basic need approach, second income approach, third capability approach, or fourth welfare approach. Now, here the correct answer is third, that is, sorry, first, that is basic need approach. Okay. So, according to ILO, if you provide six basic needs to anyone, that means they are developed. And according to them, these six basic needs are health, education, food, water supply, sanitation, and housing. And if these are with someone or with some society, it means they are developed. Okay. Now we are moving to the next question. That is question number 40. Which of the following is not one of the pillars of human development? First equity, second affordability, third sustainability, or fourth empowerment? Our correct answer is second. Why? Because we have four pillars of human development, equity, sustainability, productivity, and empowerment. Affordability is not there. Now, let's move to the next question. That is question number 41. In which country the milk is transported from the farms to factories through pipelines? First India, second New Zealand, third Canada, fourth Mexico. So the correct answer is here, second New Zealand. Because Australia and New Zealand, these two are the most prominent one in the milk production. And we know that pipelines are best suited for transportation of any uh, material which is in slurry form or in liquid form. So in New Zealand, the peoples use pipelines for the transportation of milk. Okay. Now next question, question number 42. What is the pattern of settlement that develops around a lake? First rectangular, second linear, third T-shaped, fourth circular. So actually, circular type of pattern developed around a lake. That is our option number four. Why? Because in circular pattern, actually at the center of the village, either there is a lake or pond, etc. Or sometimes a round-shaped temple is there or at the core of the villages, there is some prominent uh, place or symbol is there around which the settlements develop. Okay. Now let move let move to the next one. Question number forty three. Okay. 
which of the following is not a push factor of migration for the ruler of the rural population in india first high population pressure on the land second availability of regular work third lack of basic infrastructure facility like healthcare and education and fourth local conflict now our correct answer is second why if there is a regular work available why someone migrate from one place to another so in push factor the place of living seems less attractive like the there were several problems like high population pressure is there basic infrastructure is not there local conflicts are not there so generally people tend to move from that place next question question number 44 when and by whom the first human development report was published first who in 1992 second undp 1992 third who in 1991 and fourth undp 1990 our correct answer is fourth so uh, since 1990, UNDP is publishing two reports, Human Development Report and Human Poverty Report to measure the human development of different countries. Okay. Next question. Among the following, which is the least pop which was the least populated state in 2011? First Haryana, second Tripura, third Jharkhand, or fourth Sikkim. So the correct answer for this question is fourth Sikkim, which was only have a population of 21.3%. Okay. Now let's move to the next question, question number 46. Which of the following states registered the highest population growth rate during 2001 to 11? First Karnataka, second Tamil Nadu, third Rajasthan, or fourth Maharashtra? So our correct answer for this question is fourth, uh, sorry, is third Rajasthan, having the population of 21 by having a population growth of 21.3% only. Okay. Sorry for the previous question. It was not there. Okay. Now we are moving to the next question. Question number 47. Question is, Dhani is an example of dash type of rural settlement. It is also actually a fill in the blanks type of question. Given options are hamleted, second discord, third semi-cluster or fourth cluster. So the correct answer for this question is first hamleted. There were several names which are given to the hamleted settlement like Para, Palli, Nagara, Dhani, etc. Okay. Now the next question, question number 48. Which of the following towns developed as a satellite town? First Rohtak, second Sindri, third Dispur or fourth Mau? Our correct answer is first Rohtak. So post independence, several towns were developed in India. And for those areas which were highly populated, some satellite towns were developed to decongest the population. It's like Rohtak, Gurugram, and Ghaziabad were developed around the Delhi. Okay. Now the next question, question number 49. Dash is an example of ancient towns in India. Again, this is the fill in the blanks type of question. Given options are first Madurai, second Hyderabad, third Kolkata, or fourth Delhi. Now our correct answer is first, that is Madurai. So 2000 years ago, several towns were developed and these were the actually centers of religion. The Madurai, Patliputra were the few examples, Varanasi was the, were the few example of these types of ancient towns. Okay. Now the last question of this paper, question number 50. Boro, or Aman and Os are dash. Again, this is the fill in the blanks type of question. First, tribes which are found, found in the northeastern part of India. Second, types of folk dances. Third, name of rice crops. Or four, types of cotton crops. Now, the correct answer is third, name of rice crops. Because in West Bengal, in a whole agricultural year, uh, they have grown at least three different types of rice varieties. And these were named as Was, Aman, and Oro. Sorry, Os, Aman, and Boro. So the correct answer is start. So that's all for this paper. Thank you so much.